Welcome to Investors Insights. Our topic today, trends versus reality. Here at Five Plan Partners, we like to bring you information that gives you insight of the data and trends that we're following, as well as the reaction and, and what, what's really reality. Uh, so much information is coming your way. And I thoroughly enjoyed my morning meeting today with Bobby Norman and Trey Booth. Uh, great, great session uh, discussion here as we approach year end. I want to thank both of you for all that you do here at Five Plan Partners, but a lot of extra hours go into all the research, uh, the time you put in to, to bring out this bring out this information to our clients. And so I want to thank you for that. Uh, with that said, trends versus reality, that's the topic we came up with. And, and Bobby, I'd like to start with you because job growth is all over the news. Uh, last week, it was important. But I thought you you took trends and versus reality and really uh, pointed some things out. So talk about that. Yeah. So as we start to look forward to 2024, we also want to look back on, on this year, 2023. And we came into this year with many economists calling for a recession and a significant slowdown in jobs. Yes. Well, those economists have been wrong as the job market has stayed strong throughout the year. And last week, the jobs report showed the U.S. economy added another solid month of job growth, adding 199,000 jobs in November. And the unemployment rate fell to 3.7 percent, which, again, is a lot better than what the economists were expecting. So looking at this job chart here, job gains occurred in healthcare and government with a meaningful increase in manufacturing. And that obviously got a boost from the workers returning uh, from the labor strike. And one area that we're watching closely is the loss of jobs in retail. And it's no secret that technology and e-commerce are playing a role in those job losses. It's a trend we're following. And it's a theme that we'll be watching carefully next year in 2024. And the impact that technology and artificial intelligence will have on not only the economy, but also the markets next year. Uh, so we'll be watching that carefully. So it's great to see a, jo a strong jobs report. But as we've seen throughout the year, strong economic reports have kept the Federal Reserve in the spotlight and to see what will they'll say about keeping rates higher for longer this week. So big news on the Fed this week. Uh, we, you know, we celebrated the strong jobs report last week, but there is a concern that the strong jobs report will keep the Federal Reserve in the picture and give them options to continue their fight to slow down the economy. You know, it's really important how we look at that jobs growth and uh, how jobs and career paths are changing and you know, because it's one thing to say we got a strong economy, but what's weak over here and what's strong here? And uh, I thought your summary did a really good job on that. And tying into that, uh, Trey, you uh, this week, as Bobby's already stated about the big topic about interest rates, uh, show our viewers uh, your data in regards to what the market is looking at or the trend they're proposing. Uh, I thought you used a, a, a great statement in our conversation, optimism over experience. Uh, I think that's loud and clear. So elaborate on that. Yeah, thanks, Greg. And, and Bobby's right. The, the the good economic data, it really puts the Fed, uh, Fed in a box a little bit. And, and so that's the big information report this week is the CPI, where inflation is, and then the Fed is on Wednesday. And so it's widely expect the Fed's going to hold rates where they are. That's not going to be a surprise. The Fed hasn't raised rates in July. But what's interesting is what does the market been doing while the Fed has been meeting? And so you can see here in this first chart that the Fed from the Fed's September meeting to the, their November meeting, the 10-year Treasury moved all the way from 4.35% up to 4.77%. And so the Fed talked about it in their meeting that the market had tightened economic conditions without the Fed having to raise rates. So the Fed got the pause, but interest rates went up and, and that tightened economic conditions which is what the Fed wants to do to bring inflation down. Well, so let's look at what's happened since that November meeting. The 10-year Treasury has gone from 4.7 all the way down to 4.14. So the, the market has actually loosened economic conditions and, and set the stage for what could be higher inflation. And so that's gone against what the Fed would like. And so why would the 10-year Treasury drop in interest rates? And that's because market participants, and I'll use this uh, Fed funds rate futures, which is the market's uh, expectations for where the interest rates are going to be. This chart shows that middle of next year, the market anticipates the Fed cutting rates. And so we're, we're currently at a high end of 5.5. Five. 
And this shows that the market's anticipating the Fed having to cut rates. It's going to be hard for the Fed to do if inflation remains above its 2% target. Currently, inflation is expected to be somewhere between 3.9% and 3% this week. So that's 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 lower. That's on the, the correct trend. But it's not reality that it's at that 2%. And so and I'm, we're big fans of the market, free market here. We expect the market to be right most times. But the market has been extremely wrong in predicting what Jerome Powell is going to do. I want to show you this chart. From this time, yeah, from this time last year, after the Fed's December meeting, the market expected. I want to show you the December 2023 projection. Market expected the Fed funds rate to be at 4.3 percent on December of 2023. We see it here today, Fed funds rate at 5.5. So the market has consistently expected the Fed to stop hiking rates and start cutting rates, and the market has consistently been wrong since the Federal Reserve finally realized that inflation was no longer transitory. That they had to do something to stop it, and so, like you said, this is a, this is an experience of the market uh, market using optimism over experience in terms of projecting out where the Fed's going to be, because there is no history that shows us that Jerome Powell is going to cut rates in, in in the face of higher inflation, in the face of strong jobs, and so it's very hard to see a world where rates are coming down without the economy weakening at some point, and that and the market is really pricing in kind of a perfect scenario where interest rates are coming down, but profits and jobs are going up, and that's that's really not a case of, of something that we've ever seen. And so the trends kind of are conflicting right now. And so that's what we're watching closely, where the market seems to be all sides. And the Fed is going to speak this week, and maybe they're going to push the market back right right, right on sides. So, so very big meeting, even though nothing's expected to happen. It's still a very big meeting to close the year. Yeah, well, well said. Uh, you did excellent on that, Trey. And I, uh, I th- think our viewers will see that as very insightful uh, folks, keep in mind uh, here in a couple of weeks, we're out of 2023, but this may be the topic as we get into first quarter of 2024. Uh, and so we everybody will scrutinize Jerome Powell's words this week and what the Fed action is, is telling them. But simultaneously, uh, we might not see the rippling effect until after the first year. Do you agree with me on that, Trey? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, folks, we can't thank you enough for believing in us. Uh, watching uh, this vlog. Uh, We hope this information is beneficial to you. And keep in mind through all our social media throughout the week, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, our uh, YouTube, uh, our our podcast, we're going to keep you informed on these kind of topics. And then also, we can't thank you enough for those of you who have forwarded to friends, colleagues, neighbors, our blogs uh, that, you know, it's it's educated them as well, and some of them have reached out to us to to work with them. And for that, we thank you as well. Can't believe that 2023 is almost over, but uh, it's been a, a great year. Uh, it has not been a dull year, and we're looking forward to going into 2024. We hope you have a great week, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks. 